Hi, and welcome to part two of the basic bikini cup tutorial. This crochet tutorial is a video I made supplementary to the post on my blog. Um, it has a ton of information, written patterns. There's a part one video where I show how to make the teal bikini cup shown in this halter top on screen. I've also got a lot of these other halter tops that I worked up from these different size cups that I show how to make. Um, for this second video, I would just I just filmed myself making this particular top. Um, it is with the brown double crochet bikini cups. Um, it's pretty simple, and I just wanted to do a little demo of how I create these pretty much from scratch in my head. Um, I sort of have an idea of what I want, and then I just kind of do it and see how it comes out. So here's a couple of the other ones I've made from the cups that I show how to do on my blog. This is a pretty small size one. Um, I just attached the cups with a band along the bottom and then I go around in circles and add kind of the hem and the outer decorations as well as the straps. So for this one I attached the two cups together and I have this line of granny squares that I made separately and then attached and the straps kind of weave through crisscross in the back. This one also crisscrosses in the back. Um, the two cups are a pretty thick band along the bottom as well as a thick band that reaches out from the side of the cup to go around the back and the cross uh, tie straps weave in through that back. This last one I'm not going to show you. <laughs> it's a design and development so no sneak peek. Well maybe a little. Okay so here's my two cups that I'm working with for this video. They are double crochet stitch cups. They have a foundation chain or a foundation stitch uh, length of five and then um, double crochet, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet increases, so plus four in each row. And it makes this really rounded shape at the bottom that's good for gathering because it creates a deep and sort of voluminous uh, pocket for, <laughs> you know, following the shape of this. Is, it's a very natural shape. Um, it kind of fits the natural form of the body. I like this a lot for um, cups that operate with a drawstring on the bottom because you can gather them to the amount that is necessary to fit to your body. So hopefully you'll see what I mean a little bit better once I get started here. Um, I, so I know I'm going to do a drawstring across the bottom. Um, so I'm going to need a stitch and chain mesh. And I want to do that by tightening a little bit across the bottom because these cups are very drawn out and curved. You need to kind of um, gather them a little. So what I'm going to do, I think, is uh, one or two, well, I'm going to zoom in first of all, one or two stitches per row end. So I'm working with double crochet row ends, which means that a double crochet is about two stitches tall. So if you're working into the side of a double crochet, you can work two or three stitches. It kind of depends on your gauge. So to, to make that up, I'm just going to experiment. Um, and I think it looks, yeah, it looks like I'm doing single crochet across the bottom just to start. So to connect these cups initially, I'm just going to do a row of single crochet. And that'll create an easy base for me to work the mesh off of because right now I'm not really sure how these are going to come together. I'm just going to experiment and see what tension I like and then that'll determine how many stitches I place. With these, um, if you're just making them up off the top of your head like I like to do, you are going to experiment and pull the yarn out a couple times and it's a really great way to learn um, to navigate design and to manipulate shapes and to feel out you know different styles and modes of stitching i highly recommend it um one of, one of my art heroes of course is bob ross the pbs painter um i don't paint that much but I love to listen to Bob Ross when I work because his approach to art is so similar to mine. Um, it's really a personal endeavor. It's really not about being perfect. 
And so my approach to crochet is really the same. I encourage mistakes, <laughs> happy little accidents, because that's how you learn and pers personalize your style and your method. So experiment and pull the yarn out if you need to and do it again if you need to, if you don't like it the way you did it the first time. So you can see my cup is kind of forming here. It's got a tightness at the bottom that allows it to kind of bow out um, and that'll be exaggerated when I put the drawstring in. So as I've worked across the bottom of the cup here, I'm just going to go ahead and continue working without pause over onto the second cup. And those stitches will connect the two cups into one bikini. You can also chain a few in between if you want the cups to be a little bit more separated, a little further apart. Um, kind of depends on how you want it to fit your gals. So experiment again uh, with fit with style with stitch uh, patterns these are so quick and fun and the they really don't take much yarn so I, bikinis are really one of my favorite things to make because even if it doesn't turn out perfect you didn't really spend that much time on it <laughs> compared to other projects So since I'm kind of working this freestyle along the bottom of the cups, I'm going to stop and count and make sure I've got roughly the same amount of stitches on the bottom of each cup. Um, perfection, again, not really necessary, but I do want to make sure it's not completely off. And most, I want it to be mostly symmetrical. So here I'm finishing the single crochets across the bottom. I've worked again, like two stitches maybe into every double crochet, maybe <clears throat> one in certain places. Again, you want your stitches to be pretty much the same number, which isn't hard if you just kind of stick to one strategy. So to continue onward, I'm going to chain a length and turn so that I can work back across the bottom. Again, I have kind of an idea of what I want to do with this piece, so I'm just going to kind of feel it out. I want stitches mixed with chains, and then I'll skip, and then chain, and then stitch and skip. So I've got these spaces because I know I want my bottom tie to be drawstring style, so it'll be free. It'll just be um, strung through this these eyelets kind of at the bottom that I'm creating here by chaining these spaces and skipping these stitches. And here's a general uh, uh, written part of the pattern just on the bottom of the screen there. As you can see, I think I'm half doubling. Yeah, I'm doing half double, chain one, skip next stitch, and then repeating that across. As you can see, my cup is starting to be nicely shaped because I've tightened it up just a little bit across the bottom. Stop and make sure things are looking centered as I continue across, all the way across the bottom, across both cups. And I'll just kind of lay this out to show my progress. I've got my cups attached and then I've got a row of eyelets across the bottom for my drawstring tie. And I know I also want to do fringe on this piece, so I'd love to have a separate 
place to hang the fringe. I don't really want it hanging in the same row as my tie. So I'm just gonna make one more row of half doubles, chains, and skips, working the half doubles into the half doubles of the row below. You could work it into the spaces. I just chose not to, this piece. My second row of mesh is complete. I'm gonna cut yarn and tie off. So I don't really, I don't wanna work any more rows along the bottom. I'm not gonna work any rows along the side, so I don't need to turn and work up the side of the cup any. Here's what I've got so far. Now, if I wanted to do a band across the side, I could turn and work my yarn in rows coming off the side of the cup. Um, I'm gonna show an example. This top has even rows even. I've worked all the way around the cups and across the bottom of the bands and then worked the side bands across part of the sides of each cup. And I did the same thing on this one, only the side bands here, I worked back and forth in rows but decreased only on one side so it slants together and kind of comes to a point. So that's a couple of different ways of working side bands. Usually I work those after I've connected the cups. Um, I'm not working, again I'm going to do a drawstring tie along the bottom plus fringe so I don't, I'm not worrying about that with this one but I do want to create a border along the top just for a pretty accent. So I'm going to go along the top in one row, starting at one corner, obviously the corner that is the right side and the right, <laughs> not the wrong side. Some people don't care about wrong side. I think it crochet looks prettier with the right side facing, so I try and keep my decorations facing the right side. So kind of know that I want to do another open, lacy looking, semi, semi-open mesh kind of design. So kind of gauge how many stitches I have to work with, how far apart I want this to be, what does it, what do I want it to look like? I kind of want it to look like petals. So I'm thinking a shell made of clusters probably double crochet clusters so I'm just gonna start out and kind of see what I want so two double crochet clusters is enough so I work a double crochet with one loop left on the hook and then another with a loop left on the hook and then I draw through both loops at once I'm not really gonna go into how to do a cluster in this video you can just kind of see me doing it so really I'm just trying to experiment with how many I'm gonna need to work naturally across the border of the bikini cups and so it looks nice and pretty. I do wanna tighten just a little bit, but I'm not gonna accomplish that in this row. So I skip a few stitches. So here's my two, well I have four, two double crochet clusters and I'm skipping two stitches in between and I'm chaining in between the clusters. But looking at that, I can kind of see that that's not going to be quite, it's not gonna fit quite right. <clears throat> not how I want it to. So I'm gonna pull it all back out. Well, maybe not all. Yes, all. Now I'm gonna do something similar, but with just a different, slightly different stitch count. I 
think the problem was that I thought it would be too tight. So here I am, I'm just gonna add more double crochet clusters. And I'm chaining one in between. So I'm gonna do five double crochet clusters. Four was just not enough. Five seems like a lot, and it is, but I'm going to tighten it up on the next row. I already know that, so five seems good. It's a nice, have a nice central cluster. It's kind of lacy, but it's still a bit solid. So I'm going to skip a couple stitches and single crochet, and then do those five double crochet cluster shells across the top of the cup. And I'll probably run out of this yarn, but I have this other little yarn to add to, so I'll probably be okay. Okay. So that's about it. I just kind of experiment and then decide what I want to do and try it out. And I'm going to show the um, cluster shell I'm working in slow motion here. So I'm skipping two stitches in that third stitch. I work a double crochet, but I don't work both loops off the hook. I leave one on. And I do that twice. So as you can see, I've got three loops on a hook. And I yarn over and I pull through all three loops. And I chain one. And I repeat this process to make four more double crochet clusters. I guess I lied. I am going to go over the double crochet clusters in this video. So again, normal double crochet, yarn over, pull through, but don't yarn over and pull through a second time. Make another and then yarn over and pull through. I love clusters. <laughs> They're great. Chain one in between. Here you can see the shells shaping up. They're not tight. There's plenty of room left. Um, I will want to tighten it up to kind of draw the cups inward and exaggerate the inward curve so that this next row I'm going to work is going to be tighter. But for now, I just want the decoration. So here's my completed row of shells. Like I said, I do have this other yarn to complete the next row. I'm gonna work across the same side. This is the wrong side. As you can see, it's not as pretty. I don't like it as much. So I'm gonna start again with the right side facing <clears throat> on the same edge and attach my new yarn. 
as I mentioned, I'm going to make this row a little bit tighter. So what I'm going to do is just really connect these shells together with the second row. I'm going to chain three to count as my first double crochet. And I know I'm going to connect them, but I don't know how yet, at least not on the screen. So I'm just going to start experimenting. Probably want a stitch in the top of uh, the middle of the five clusters. And so I'll probably single crochet and then do some chain stitches to make a space in between the shells. I'm gonna go in the middle of the next shell, but that's like, whoa, way too tight. That is not gonna look good. So rip it back out, try again. Uh, let's see, single crochet. So I think I start to chain four and then I double crochet in between the shells. So that was my next try. So chain four, single crochet. And this would be okay, but I didn't think this was the right tension either. It might be for you, it wasn't for me. It's just a little bit too loose now. So I tried twice, one was too tight, one was too loose. Guess what I'm gonna do now? <laughs> Rip it out and try it again. Yep, here I am looking at it going, uh, it's not gonna work. Cool. Okay, well, frog, frog, frog. So what I end up doing here is actually very similar, except I just chain three in between instead of four. It's a simple adjustment. It makes a pretty big difference. It lands me where I wanna be as far as tension. It looks nice and it features the shells. So just chain three, double crochet in between each shell, chain three, single crochet in the middle, double crochet cluster. So that's the third cluster of each shell. One, two, three, double crochet. We're gonna repeat that all the way across the bikini cup. Look at that, it's, it's a little bit tighter, but it's not too tight. So I'm where I want to be at. It really didn't take that long to just sit there and make mistakes and figure it out. So here I've reached the top of the cup and I do need to place a strap because I'm on my last row. So instead of single crochet, or I'm gonna, sorry, instead, instead of one double crochet, I'm gonna double crochet and then I'm going to start chaining to create the strap before continuing across the cup. So here I am, I'm going to chain, it's gonna be fast. And once I have chained my length, I'm just going to turn and slip stitch in each chain stitch and that creates a nice rounded uh, strap tie out of crochet. Um, it means you can go up the strap and then go back down and resume your stitching on the top where you left off. So that's nice because it means you can create the straps as part of a row, which means fewer yarn ends to weave in and just a sturdier strap in general. So I'm gonna finish my strap and then keep working in the same manner across the top of the cups. Obviously I added a second strap and then when I was done I made an independent one of those cords. So I just chained a length and then slip stitch back down and I wove that chain through the bottom um, stitching that we created with the spaces. And then I decorated it with fringe, wove in my ends. And as you can see, it makes a really nice natural silhouetted bikini top. Um, there's so many different ways you can make these. <laughs> There's so much fun. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, and do like and subscribe to my channel if you like my content. Um, it helps me out a lot. And then uh, take a visit on my blog where I have a ton of free patterns and tutorials. Thanks for joining me.